Good morning. Um, so first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this um, meeting. And I'm so very happy that, you know, um, to talk to you about the experience in Vietnam. And I'm so happy that the first two presentation was giving the brief, you know, about the regional picture, um, the update about the epidemic and also the strategy to respond to those and also the technical guidance from WHO and how to tackle the, the, the issues in the region. And I'm very happy that Vietnam is a part of the overall picture. And um, the topic today I would like to talk about the, implementa uh, the implementation of HIV self-test in Vietnam. And also, of course, the, um, uh, specifically about the key, um, the role and the involvement of the key population or the CSO in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, um, as um, um, being introduced, I'm now the technical advisor of the HIA, that is the Ho, Ho Chi Minh City HIV AIDS Asso Association. And this is the um, Vietnamese uh, CSO and um, established in um, Ho Chi Minh City and based there. And we have the um, um, focus area of technical support to the CSO in Vietnam and also um, providing the um, research training and also, of course, the last one is the doing the charity work. Yeah. Yeah. So why 2015? Um, that is a um, very significant year um, and also the very significant milestone in Vietnam. Before uh, 2015, um, uh, the HIV testing landscape in Vietnam was just, you know, conventional. They saw only one model fits all. That means, you know, all the KP, the clients, um, they are being outreached and being referred to the public uh, health care facility. And um, they do in getting the risk assessment and afterwards, you know, the public uh, health care provider will do the testing and then refer them to, you know, to the treatment or to the STI treatment and also to other, you know, uh, support um, services. So why um, testing, uh, HIV self-testing in Vietnam? Um, the epidemic in Vietnam is concentrated in the key population, MSM, the peewit, uh, the uh, transgender, and also the, uh, the female sex work, work, worker. Um, so um, for some time, you know, the uh, annual national HIV testing uptake in Vietnam was rather low. Before the year 2015, um, the annual HIV testing uptake was just, you know, more or less 30% of the whole population. So, um, and since, you know, the epidemic um, was concentrated in the key population, so there's a need uh, for the country to find uh, the, something new and something innovative, you know, to, um, to diversify the HIV testing in order to reach more and more key population, especially the hard to reach uh, subgroups. So that's why, um, 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 you know, the, the Ministry of Health and also the country and also the international community in Vietnam working on H HIV and of course the CSO in Vietnam, uh, we, work to, we work together to find the way, you know, to, for the new approach. Um, no signal again, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, so um, the HIV uh, self-test, you know, in Vietnam um, started with the pilot in 2016. But first, you know, we talk about the 2015. Um, by that time, you know, the HIV self-test kits was not officially launched and distributed in Vietnam. And also there's no scientific data regarding the HIV self-test. So the government, they don't know, they didn't know what to do by that time. So that's why um, um, there's a need to conduct the pilot study uh, with the involvement of the CSO. And by that time, you know, the CSO or the community members were the, for the first time ever directly involved in the uh, community testing and the lay testing. Yeah. Um, by that time, I still remember um, the government and also some other stakeholders in Vietnam were very skeptical about the capacity of the community, whether they can do it or not. 
but you know, thanks to the support of the donor first, and also uh, the government's goodwill, you know, to let the community to be involved. So the pilot study was successful uh, with the involvement of the community. Um, um, and the, um, I have to mention also the, the leading role of PATH. Um, they implemented the US, uh, USAID Healthy Markets, and they are the leading one in this one together with the Ministry of Health and also PEFA, WHO, and uh, last but not least, the key population CSO. Yeah, so just the, um, a few um, key findings uh, from the pilot study um, showing that, you know, uh, the, uh, the client, the KP, accept and willing to pay for an HIV self-test kit. Yeah, you can see uh, on the slide that, you know, most of the KP um, participated into the study reported the intention to use an HIV self-test kit. And also, um, some of them, you know, like the MSM, they prefer uh, and the female sex work, they prefer the oral fluid uh, HIV self-test. And the PWID, on the con con contrary, they prefer the blood test, um, you know, way. Um, and um, most of the participants in the study, they, um, they show that they are willing to pay. And very interesting that the MSM, they have the tendency to pay more than the other uh, key populations. And uh, this is also the... Uh, the study done by um, our colleagues from PATH, yeah. And of course, I would like to mention here that is very important. Um, as Dr. Pavi just said that, you know, you need to have to integrate the HIV self-testing into the national guidelines. And here in Vietnam, we are very fortunate to have the, uh, the political will from the government. They get a lot of, um, uh, you know, they give a lot of support to the donors to the INGO working on HIV and also they provide, they put the trust into the CSO in Vietnam so that we can have the launch of the HIV self-test um, um, in Vietnam in 2016 and with Ministry of Health and also uh, the former U.S. ambassador at that time and his partner and of course with the um, participation of the community. And um, on the right side, you can see that is um, the document which is very important, that is the National Guidelines on HIV Testing, uh, approved by the government of Vietnam in 2018, in which it regulated very clearly that, you know, community testing, lay testing, and also um, the HIV self-test is one essential part of the whole picture of HIV program in Vietnam. And it is, um, uh, I think that is one of the key milestones paving the way for, uh, for all the uh, response afterwards. Um, and together with the government and the international donors, the community or CSO, um, they participate, um, participated very actively into the, um, the overall picture and the whole response. Um, they participate into the um, campaigns to generate the demands among the key population and the, the, the potential clients on the needs of an HIV self-test. They use the social media, um, they can use the dating apps, they can use the entertainment channels like the MTV, and they can uh, participate into the video um, clips, you know, uh, and also showing the instruction how to use an HIV test at home. So here, um, this is just the snapshot of the, um, of the different milestone of uh, the HIV self-test um, uh, in Vietnam from pilot to, study, uh, to scale up. You can see that in 2018, as I just mentioned, that is a very important milestone, the national guidelines being approved on HIV testing, um, saying about the uh, HIV testing and community testing, uh, self-test and community testing. And in September 2018, the government, um, they approved for the CSO and the social enterprise to, and also the private clinic and pharmacy to sell and distribute officially the HIV self-test kits in the market, yeah, which is very Im 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 important for all the response in Vietnam afterwards. And um, after the pilot, uh, 
Now in 2019, um, the, uh, how do you say, the community uh, testing landscape can be expand, can be uh, scaled up to other provinces, not only in the two provinces in the pilot study. And from 2020, um, that witnessed the um, evolution of the models. Um, we have the differentiated models now in Vietnam, like you know, from the facility base or from the online distribution and also from the private sector. And of course, uh, last but not least, from the key led uh, um, CSO. Now they are very, uh, you know, they are growing very strongly and they can open their own clinics and HIV clinics. Yeah, that is the involvement of the CSO in Vietnam. Um, as the, the data from Ministry of Health and also from um, the key partners, stakeholders that I uh, have consulted with before coming to this workshop, there are more than 40 um, CBO and CSO, you know, who are very active and strong in Vietnam, working very actively uh, in the HIV program in Vietnam. Um, so um, they are either... Uh, either um, new or old, they have less experience or very experienced, but the outreach, you know, approach of them are very flexible and effective. And of course, they are very proactive to participate into the HIV prevention and treatment in Vietnam. And some of them on the right side, you can see that some of the names like Zilin Vietnam, Galang Clinic, um, Aloke Lighthouse, My Home, um, Ruby uh, Clinic and name it what not, you know, um, they are very active and they are they open now their own uh, HIV clinics um, um, like Zilin Vietnam now, you know, they are based in Saigon, but they have uh, seven clinics uh, et, uh, to provide the ARV um, treatment all over Vietnam and um, yeah, and some of them are in the north of Vietnam. Yeah, so the community um, now are strongly in um, the sustaining uh, for their own, how do you say, for, um, for their own life. They don't have to depend much on the donor now. They can do their own business, their startup, and they can sustain and provide a sustainable service to their own community. Yeah. Um, they also um, get the strength in the terms that they can participate directly into the monitoring of the national program. Uh, um, how do you say, to monitor the service and also uh, with the purpose to gather the data for quality improvement. Um, and of course, the capacity of them was being raised, you know, after um, participate, uh, participating into several studies. And also, um, I think that is the most one, uh, one of the most important projects that is the COM in Vietnam and also the CAP, the CIB. Um, yeah where the community can participate as the uh, member of the study from the beginning to the end. Yeah. So that is the snapshot of HIV in Vietnam. Um, as I just um, said, we have the differentiated models. The first one is through the donor, the PEFA, the Global Fund, and the WHO. And um, um, that is the um, providing the free HIV self-test kit. And the second one is the KP Lab Health Facility, as I said, you know, the Zilin Vietnam and some other um, private clinics. Yeah. And of course, the third one is the commercial market um, where clients, you know, or anyone who can buy an HIV self test kit now in the pharmacy. And they can also use, you know, the B2C um, e commerce platform like, you know, Shopee, Lazada, Tiki. Um, yeah, and they can use, you know, different kinds of uh, HIV self-test kits now. And very, Im very important that, you know, now um, the whole picture can link the, um, the client who use um, an HIV self-test service now to, as a porter to ART uh, enrollment and PrEP. So here's just the example of the HIV self-test provision in Gantho. As Dr. Pavi just said, you know, there are um, um, four, four main steps, you know, doing the, out, the online out, outreach first, giving the information about the HIV self-test, you know, program in Vietnam. And um, so the potential client can get, you know, to those one. 
um, they are the user of Facebook, uh, Instagram, or um, Twitter, and other gay dating apps. They can get to those apps, and they can get the information about the self-testing website. Um, then they can do the self-assessment, and then they can order online an HIV self-test kit. And then afterwards, um, um, they can get you know, the test kit to their home, um, ship to their home, or by mail, or by grab, or they either can come to the, um, to the health facility to self-pick up. Yeah. And afterwards, they, um, um, uh, they will be follow up on the feedback of the result, of the reactive uh, um, result within seven days by phone, by SMS, or by the reminder from the CSO. And then afterwards, they, the, the remaining job of the health facility and also of the CSO to do the follow-up, either um, negative to PrEP or positive to uh, ART. Yeah. So it's just the example of the, um, um, the number, the achievement of the EPIC. I got a, um, the, the data from the EPIC project that is the, um, the project funded by US CDC in Vietnam and with the collaboration with the Ministry of Health, the VAIC. And you can see that the number of the order within the, um, uh, the eight months uh, uh, in 2020 and 22, yeah, there are more than seven, uh, more than thousand, uh, more than seven thousand of order being delivered to the client, and there are um, more than two hundred, you know, with reactive results. Yeah, and it is the number, the data um, break into the provinces <laughs> who participate into the epic project. Yeah, the blue uh, one is the uh, non-reactive result and the orange one is the reactive one by provinces. Yeah. So um, uh, this is the, the portal uh, of the um, reactive result to prep the number that you can that you cannot see now but you will see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And here is the example of the uh, the enrollment uh, into the ART for the reactive one. Yeah. So um, in, in, in short, uh, HIV self-test in Vietnam um, has to be improved from the pilot study and through the actual implementation. Um, HIV self-test is uh, easily accessed. It is a safe, acceptable, and the KP are willing to pay. And um, also, um, it's also find out that, you know, uh, HIV self-test kit is also being used by those that had never before an HIV test. And uh, the self-test um, is preferred over the facility-based um, testing. And of course, it can result in the higher ART uptake as uh, an example, uh, as you know, I um, just, you know, um, uh, talk, yeah. And of course, it's important to, uh, to, to prep. I decided to choose self-testing as it is a quick and it can be done by, uh, privately. The counseling by the CSO was open and friendly, and I could take the test whenever it was convenient for me. It is uh, one of the example of the, uh, uh, in the, uh, one of the qualitative study uh, conducted by the USAID Path Healthy Markets Project. Yeah. So uh, the KP's role in the HIV self-testing implementation in Vietnam um, the first one, uh, they are very proactive in the uh, in the pilot study to generate uh, to generate the data for the government to um, produce the national uh, policy and also the technical SOPs, and uh, they participated very um, actively into the uh, awareness raising and the generating demands of HIV self tests through the social media through their own online net network and also from the face-to-face -face interaction. And they also participate in the advocacy for HIV self-test kits, registration, and commercial distribution. And of course, they play a very important role in the national HIV program. And without their uh, participation, the 1990 goals in Vietnam by uh, 2020 cannot be achieved. 
um, and um, some of the CSO, they have uh, own their own clinic now and they can provide the HIV self-test service. Now they can lead the role out uh, of their own, you know, the model to other provinces. And of course, uh, last but not least, they, now they can lead the monitoring of the national HIV service provision, including the HIV self-test uh, provision. Uh, that is uh, being proved through the projects, um, the COM, the community-led monitoring, and also the CIB uh, funded by PEFA and also by USCDC. Here are the lessons learned on the implementation in Vietnam. Um, when there is no uh, data on the HIV uh, self-test yet, there should be an um, scientific evidence and the stakeholder should work together to produce this one to show to the government in order to convince them that it is uh, effective and it is uh, convenient and it is uh, very promising uh, to contribute to uh, the HIV uh, program uh, in general. And uh, the second one um, is the demand generation cam cam campaigns. This is very important, and it can show that, you know, uh, as Dr. Brigitte just said from the beginning, that now the young population in Asia and Pacific um, um, are having the very high uh, HIV infection, and they are the one who use the social media. So by doing so, we, by understanding so, we, we think that, you know, we should um, focus more on the social media and also using the KOL. For example, during the COVID time, um, uh, thanks to the, um, the social media campaigns on HIV self-test and the, the, the KP, they can stay at home and they can order the test and then they can do the test at, at home. And of course, the uh, one thing which is very important, that is the political will. Um, without this one, we cannot um, achieve uh, substantially, uh, you know, uh, the improvement of the HIV um, testing uptake in Vietnam. Um, and of course, uh, the other thing which is very important is the differentiated models of the uh, product distribution, um, either uh, through the health facility, uh, through the private clinic, or through the, um, the website, and of course, which is very important, that is the KP-led clinic. Um, HIV self-test as a portal to PrEP and ART in Vietnam, which is very clear now um, from the data. And of course, um, one thing which is very important, um, without this one, we cannot achieve. That is the technical support from the international donor and uh, uh, for example, from PEFA and from the, and of course, I think uh, for this one, I would like to address the um, recognition uh, for the path uh, because in Vietnam, they get the funding from US AID through the Healthy Markets Project. And today, actually, um, I'm very surprised that one of the colleagues of mine, um, when I was still working at PATH, uh, Madame uh, Tham, yeah, she's also here, yeah, so uh, she's also um, very active, you know, from the beginning of the healthy markets, and she contributes a lot of, you know, uh, efforts, and together with PATH, contribute to the whole testing, uh, H H HIV self-testing in Vietnam, yeah. And of course, the last but not least, that is the, um, uh, in Vietnam, we have a uh, quite strong national CSO network. Now the uh, CSO, they can sustain on their own. They have their own startup. They can uh, sustain without the, uh, the financing support from the donor. Yeah. So that is, I think, that contributes to the successful. Yeah. I would like to acknowledge also um, uh, the support for providing the information and also the presentation that I I inspire, I was inspired, yeah, that here. All the, um, how do you say, the logos of the uh, private clinics uh, being run by the CBO, the CSO in Vietnam, yeah, and of course the COM project. Thank you so much.